Welcome to Write Your Book in a Flash with Dan Janelle, the only podcast where you'll learn how successful people just like you have grown their businesses, expanded their influence, and made more money by writing a book. On each episode, you'll learn the inside secrets to help you create a book that can serve as a powerful marketing tool to skyrocket your business. I'm your host, Dan Janelle. I help thought leaders, business executives, and entrepreneurs write their books. To find out more, go to writeyourbookinaflash.com. Welcome, everyone. I'm delighted to welcome today's guest, Peter Montoya. How are you, Peter? Dan, I'm doing great. Good to be here. Fantastic. You know, uh, you're one of my clients, and I actually set up a, uh, a Google search for you. And every day, you're appearing somewhere on someone's podcast, or you're being written about in someone's <laughs> blog or e-zine. You're like everywhere. You're Mr. Everywhere on the internet, as far as I'm concerned. So why don't you tell uh, our listeners a little bit about you and what you do? Uh, yeah, I've had a very long and storied career. I started off my I, when I graduated from college uh, doing sales uh, for a sales and motivation speaker. Then I started an advertising agency specializing in financial advisors, and I wrote a book called The Brand Called You, which was on personal branding. I did uh, 2,000 keynote presentations. I sold 100,000 books of, of The Brand Called You. Uh, I've started a software company. I've owned CrossFit gyms, uh, insurance businesses, and now I'm in leadership development, which was kind of my original passion 30 years ago, what I really originally wanted to do. Fantastic. What a background. I didn't know half of those things about you. That's great. <laughs> cool. Well, we're going to focus on uh, your latest entrepreneurial venture, which is uh, a book that you wrote during the pandemic. Tell us about mm-hmm. that. Maybe about March this year, I was having a good conversation with a very good friend of mine, Wade Shows, who's a fraternity brother, uh, and he's had a long passion about meetings. Uh, I was getting back into leadership development, and we were talking about what an important skill set meetings is as a skill of leadership. I mean, I don't think most people think of it that way, uh, of, as meetings being a leadership uh, act, but it really is. We spend half of our time in meetings. Um, and so we had this idea. I said, well, you know, Wade, we're the, the, we can strike while the iron's hot. We can write a really great book in about two months. Uh, I like business books that I can read in an hour to two, which is ten to 15,000 words. And I, I think we can get this done. Um, and so we got together between myself, Wade, uh, Tiffany, and Darcy, uh, and the four of us busted out a book in about oh, 45 days or so. Fantastic. So you're taking advantage of the uh, of the pandemic and everything, and getting a book done in 45 days is really Herculean, so it's easy to see why if you divide the work up between four people, it's a lot easier. So tell us, what are some tips about working with a co-author? What are some things that we can do, some do's and don'ts? What did you learn along the way? You know, uh, working with a co-author or having a business partner is much like being married. Uh, And what's absolutely critically important is you have open lines of communication. Uh, Fortunately, Wade, Tiffany, Darcy, and myself, we actually all have very good leadership skills. So we know how to, when there's an issue, rather than bearing the issue and letting it fester, we know how to rise it to the surface and say, hey, this is what's going on for me. This is or isn't working. Uh, What can we do about this? And so we had regular meetings with uh, very candid uh, agendas and candid conversations to keep things moving forward. Can you give us an example of one time where there was a disagreement of some sort and you resolved it? Oh, sure. So there were, you know, like like any time you've got a partnership, it always feels that sometimes that you're doing more work than the other party or the other person's dropping the ball. And so we would have these regular meetings every Tuesday, I believe, at 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, and some Tuesdays we would show up and somebody had done what they said they would do. Uh, and so it would be very matter of fact, okay, well, you know, you said you do this. This is our deadline. You didn't get it done. Uh, how could you get this caught up? And how do we ensure this doesn't happen again? So how do we actually make sure we're staying on target? Perfect. That, that's a great example. Um, do you find that some people have more skill sets in a certain area than others and they, they, they worked? You said, okay, you're going to be in charge of editing or you're going to be in charge of the leaders' uh-huh. section. How did you de- – uh, let me rephrase the question. How did you decide who did what? Yeah, I, I think that in some regards we kind of just naturally fell into it. Tiffany and Wade had the bulk of the content, and so we just needed them to start talking. So our first calls were those two largely talking, and they probably provided 80% of the content. 
I probably provided 20% of the content, which was kind of the, the leadership aspect of it. Uh, and Darcy did the bulk of the writing. Um, from that, I've been handling most of the business components of it because we're going to be self-publishing and self-promoting the book. Okay, so I was kind of the, the driver, provided mm-hmm. a little content. Wade Tiffany did content, and Darcy did most of the, almost all the writing. Great. So you used everyone's strong points to their benefit. No, you never any round pegs and square holes. Everyone was doing what they. No, we did not. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, now you're getting the book done very, very quickly as well in terms of production. Let's talk about that. How did you find copy editors and proofreaders and layout and designers and all that good stuff? I, I got lucky because uh, I've got one, one person, and that's Darcy on my team. And Darcy is probably the most talented human being I, I've met uh, maybe in the last 30 years. Uh, she writes. Uh, she can design. She can do uh, layout. Uh, we've, I have another writer from my advertising days to do copy editing along the way. So it was. It wasn't. We didn't have to go out and do a big giant search to find people to do those things for us. Uh, however, I probably get an email a day from somebody offering one of those services in my inbox. So there's a lot of people out there servicing this industry. Oh, definitely, definitely. So it's hard to find good people, so we rely on word of mouth. So it's nice to have them on staff, even better. Cool. Um, yes. So you're an advertising guy. You probably have some interesting ways to market a book that uh, our listeners haven't heard of. So what are your creative ways to get the book out there? You know, I. so, you know... <laughs> First of all, you got to go back to your own market. So, I mean, this is nothing that you don't know, Dan, uh, which means, you know, email, wor- word of mouth, call, pick up the phone, call in, in friends. If you have anybody who works for big businesses and they can do bulk purchases, you can do that. Uh, I, will, I will be going back and trading my services uh, for bulk purchases since we're self-publishing. Rather than getting a $10,000 speaking fee, I'll have them actually buy that volume of books through a bookseller somewhere uh, so they count toward our totals. Uh, and then also we'll be doing a pretty big social media campaign uh, on Facebook. Uh, if you go to, you know, there's a page called Peter Montoya. I've got 1.2 million followers. And so we'll be doing a pretty big aggressive launch um, through Facebook as well. Uh, plus a smattering of public relations uh, through professionals like you, Dan. Oh, thank you. Let's talk more about Facebook because I think people really don't know how to use social media to really promote a book. What, what are your plans for a Facebook? And how did you get 1.2 million followers? Right. Uh, I've been doing actually working at that page now uh, for about three or four years, constantly nurturing it and developing that list. So it's not just uh, a group of people who has a passing uh, knowing who I am. We actually have a relationship. So I'm posting on a regular basis where uh, I've nurtured them and we actually have contact. So I'm really hopeful this will probably be my first commercial offering to that group. Uh, that they're very responsive. Great. You know, we didn't say the name of the book or when the book is coming out, so we should probably do Oh, yeah. <laughs> the book is called Meeting Without Walls, How to Lead the Perfect Virtual Meeting. Uh, and we'll probably launch it in December. However, technically, the book will have a January 2021 publication date on it. Uh, I don't think anyone wants to be associated with the year 2020. <laughs> yeah, um, I had a book that uh, also was coming out in December, and the publisher put a January date on, date on it because it would seem newer uh, in that year right. than it was suddenly, oh, it's, it's a year old, <laughs> even though it's, right. it just came out. Yeah, it's one of those things that you don't think about until it happens, and you say, oh, man, bonehead mistake. Yeah, easy, easy enough to take care of. Um, tell us. Tell us about the Amazon bestseller campaigns. You know, what are your views about those? Is that something you're tr- you're striving for? And tell us more about that. I think where I'm going to probably do is uh, most likely I'm going to go for the Wall Street Journal uh, and USA Today, and, and I'll be using um, our Facebook group to do that. So more or less, if you're using uh, Ingram, uh, gosh, what's the name of Ingram service? Signature or something like that. If you use them as a publication, um, they actually count for the Wall Street Journal and uh, USA Today. Uh, so I think we're probably going to do a pretty large campaign on Facebook. We'll sell the book for a week by e-digital download for only ninety nine cents. Um, and so if we get maybe ten thousand downloads in the course of a week, we'll probably make a bestsellers list for either USA Today um, and or um, Wall Street Journal. That's where we're really going to push. I, I think anybody can become a, a bestseller on Amazon, even for a minute. 
<laughs> I don't think it means as much, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because uh, there are a lot of people selling very high-priced campaigns for Amazon, and you get to be a number one in a category for two seconds or a day. It doesn't really matter, and you can say, I'm an Amazon bestseller, but it doesn't make a lot of money for you, and uh, it doesn't really right. stay up there for a long time either if you can't have sales for more than just one day. Um, but let's talk about the long term. I mean, it's great to have a book on the Wall Street Journal bestseller list. It's great to have 10,000 downloads. But what's your long term plan for the book in terms of how to really make some real money? Because 10,000 downloads at 99 cents a piece is uh, less than your speaking fee. <laughs> so. Yeah, it, it's not much. So my real goal for, for the long term, obviously, is our, our back end services. Uh, I really see a book. Uh, it, it can be a lead generation source, which it certainly is. Uh, some people, or very few people, are able to make money selling books. I, I don't think I'll be one of those people first time out. But really what I want to be doing is cultivating people to be in a relationship with uh, over a long period of time. So I'm hoping the book is going to, to fall, help them fall into my funnel uh, of my podcast and, and or my training services. So it's just a, it, it is a lead generation service, but it's also a nurturing technique for helping them build a relationship with me on an ongoing basis. Perfect. What uh, tips would you have for uh, an expert like you uh, who's thinking about writing a book to actually get off to write a book and to get off to a successful start if they don't have three other uh, people in their organization who can do a lot of heavy lifting for them? You know, the good news is, is you could do it all yourself with a little bit of elbow, elbow grease every single day. Mm -hmm. uh, if you put two hours a day uh, into writing, uh, editing, designing your own book. There's enough self-publishing tools online. You could actually do it yourself. And probably the, the best anti-procrastination technique is the following, is you put an appointment on your calendar for two hours or an hour, an hour or two hours a day to be working on your book. And during that hour or two hours, you can do one of two things. You can either work on your book or you can do absolutely nothing which means you choose not to work on your book. You sit on a chair, not looking at your computer, not reading a book, not looking at an email. Uh, and I assure you, you will have enough positive motivation to actually want to work on your book. Nothing is actually worse than working on your book if you're finding <laughs> yourself procrastinating. And you spend an hour or two a day and a month, you're going to have made phenomenal progress. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, let's talk about your first book. Um, I, I, I'm not. I'm going to butcher the the title of it, but it was about branding. What, what tell us? Yeah, the first one was the brand called you. Right. Yeah. So what can what, what can coaches and consultants do to help brand themselves? That's it, it, a great question. So there's personal branding and there's corporate branding. There's product branding and service branding. Uh, and personal branding has some real advantages if you're in business for yourself. So the industries that most naturally fall into that are realtors, bunch advisors, dentists, some lawyers, um, speakers, authors, consultants. They all fall in that category, and they should be branding themselves. So oftentimes speakers, authors, and consultants want to create some kind of a big name or a corporate name, um, thinking that you know they're going to be creating more cre uh, credibility around themselves. Everyone knows how big your organization is. They can look at the uh, signs by seeing the quality of your website, uh, the processes you have in place. They, you more or less demonstrate, project how, how substantial you are more than having a big company name. So the whole idea with personal branding is to make it easy to remember, easy to refer. And the other thing about personal brands is they're much more attractive than most corporate brands. Uh, corporate brands are kind of cold. Uh, they seem big and intimidating. Uh, and we like doing business with people, and we want to see people succeed. So personal branding is a phenomenal technique for speakers, authors, consultants. They should be branding their organizations around themselves. Most of them should be. Fantastic. So we have to go out and get that book. I assume it's still relevant uh, today? It is. Okay, good. It is. Good. It's, it stood the test of time. So, Peter, as we wrap up today, uh, why don't you tell us who your perfect client is and how they can get in touch with you? <laughs> uh, my perfect client is anybody who's on a Zoom meeting ever, <laughs> which is <laughs> only all of us. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so we've all become, you know, we all say the word Zoom now. Zoom uh, has become the, the category uh, name for it, it's just like Kleenex and Google. 
And so, yeah, if you're on a Zoom meeting and you want your meeting to be more effective, you're our client. By and large, it's every single white-collar professional. Great. And how can people get in touch with you? Uh, they can find me at PeterMontoya.com. I'm a personal branding guy, PeterMontoya.com. And I've got a phenomenal leadership development program called the High Performance Organization, which you can find there on my website as well. Great. And you also mentioned your Facebook page. What, what is that address? Oh, yeah. So Facebook, uh, you know, Facebook.com slash Peter Montoya Leadership. Peter Montoya Leadership. And you can find me on Facebook. Great. That's easy. Thank you for being with us today, Peter. Yeah, and it was fun. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Write Your Book in a Flash with Dan Janelle, the only podcast that shows you exactly how people just like you have built their businesses by writing a book. If you'd like to write your book but don't know where to start, you can find great information at writeyourbookinaflash.com. Thanks again for listening. We'll be back next week with another insightful interview to help you become a top business leader.